Welcome to another awesome video. We collect cassette decks that have some sort of interesting feature, and this JVC deck from 83 is no exception. Instead of a standard level meter, it has something called a spectro peak indicator. What does that mean? It sounds like something from Ghostbusters, but it really is just a way of dividing up the standard uh, level meter into individual frequencies so you get a nice light show while you're playing a tape. But why is it called that? Well, I guess you take a spectrum analyzer from an equalizer and merge it with a peak indicator from a tape deck and you get a spectro peak indicator. It basically breaks down the signal into various high and low frequencies so you can see the level of each frequency versus a combined level like on normal tape decks. Now, the reason you have a level meter, of course, is to control the level of signal on the tape. If it's too low, you get background hiss. If it's too high, you get distortion in the signal. And over my lifetime, I've seen the importance of level meters generally diminish. They started off as these nice elaborate analog meters that were an important part of the process then eventually ended up just these tiny little segments. This device is sort of the peak, pun intended, of meters. So here are three JVC decks. Note in 1979, they were starting to add LEDs. Then this one has the elaborate spectro peak display and then by the 90s we're back to a very simple LED meter. Now back when I used cassettes in my youth I never really had a problem with distortion I just made sure I didn't stay in the red continuously and the simple LED meter worked fine for me. Now in addition to the frequency breakout it has a standard uh, left right and combined VU meter on the right side. So there were at least three versions of the Spectro Peak indicator over time. In 78, they introduced one made with just LEDs, and then there were two fluorescent versions, one like I have here, and then a later one in which they dropped the middle part of the VU meter that indicated a combined left and right peak. The two-color display and backlit plastic are clearly the highlight of this deck, and from an aesthetic point of view, it looks really nice. But does it really work? You can see here how certain frequencies are causing the combined peak uh, that you wouldn't see if you didn't have those broken out. So would that actually be helpful in setting a level or just confusing because you got so many different options to choose from? I don't know. Uh, if you've used this spectro peak indicator and it's helped you, please leave a comment. Well, I intended to do a bunch of demos with recording levels, but unfortunately this deck is about the worst buy I've ever made. After a few seconds of playing, it sort of grinds to a halt and disintegrates like Daffy Duck's pistol here. Inside, I found several cracked gears, and the mechanism was just pretty well worn out, pretty much shot, and I could only coax it to life for a few seconds at a time. What's Look, this thing? That's a transformer. Notice how it's mounted caddy corner and isolated, so it's... Uh, I guess to interfere and the, the, the cord goes across the back to the power cord. Everything's very modular. Like this little board is for the electronic counter. Like there's one back here. Like that's the Dolby board. Got some Dolby chips on it. You know, it's, it's pretty well nice, uh, nicely done. This looks like something was, could, a circuit board could go right here. Yeah, what's interesting is uh, JVC is, you know, it's put, they put the deck on the right and a lot of the, them are on the, on the left, but... It is very neat. I don't think anybody's been inside this one before because it's, everything's so neat and looks like it's in its original condition from 19. Working on this was a pain because there's all these micro switches and things that had to be moved out of the way to get down to it. I would not recommend working on this. It's kind of one of those mechanical mechanisms that sort of is soft touch but not totally electronic and it was just worn out. I don't know if it's this model or this particular deck just wasn't cared for. Now you could probably take out individual modules like the electronic counter was separate. You could probably repurpose that in another project, maybe even the fluorescent uh, display. One other unique thing worth mentioning about this cassette deck is the unusual reverse mode switch. Now it is mechanical. It's flipping a lever on the mechanism. There's a solenoid to actually trigger the reverse, but it's got this sort of diagonal fade effect which is just a green thing that moves in front of that and it, it attaches to, uh, to the mechanism in the back. It's, just, it's very unusual versus just having a, a standard switch. Anyway, just to sort of wrap this up, this deck, other than the Spectro Peak indicator and, and auto reverse, this was a semi-budget deck. I guess it would have run about $279 uh, US dollars in 1984. I got this one for $10 uh, used, so it not out too much money in the fact that it doesn't really work. JVC does know how to make a good cassette deck, so I definitely wouldn't let this experience put anybody off of the JVC brand. And you can look at some of the other videos we did on, on the uh, KDA3, for example. But uh, that's about it. Anything else? So this tape deck is cool and all, but what's bad about it? Okay. It doesn't work. <laughs> and we'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye.